Over the years, I've seen many filmmakers make many mistakes during the development, finance, production, and distribution of their film projects. And here are the top 10 crucial mistakes that producers need to avoid. Hi, James Pacitti, entertainment attorney and production counsel in Los Angeles. No two films are the same, and the mistakes that are made by filmmakers are never identical. But there are a number of mistakes that I, I have seen typically made by filmmakers. And if filmmakers can avoid these mistakes, they will go a long way towards successfully producing their film project. Now, the first mistake is not thinking about distribution before production. The end game of all film projects should be distribution. However, filmmakers often have not thought through what is their distribution plan until after they produce their film. The commercial aspects of a project, how and to whom they may sell their project, are questions that filmmakers need to answer during development. It's important to figure out during development how you're going to seek distribution of the film and who are the sales agents and distributors that you're going to want to work with. The second major mistake is not getting legal representation. Now, uh, not to trumpet the importance of my people, but legal landmines exist through every aspect of the development, finance, production, and distribution of a film project. And stepping on any one of these landmines can blow up the opportunity that producers will have to get distribution for the project. There are many different issues from securing the underlying rights, uh, the handling of the finance of the project to properly contracting with cast and crew to making sure that the distribution agreement has the proper terms and conditions in it. Production counsel will typically cost three to five percent of the production budget and it's worth every penny. The third mistake uh, that I see I've seen filmmakers make is a is going with a script that does not work for creative or budgetary reasons. It is very common for a script to be rewritten many, many times. And producers must not relent in the process of rewriting the script as many times as necessary with as many writers as necessary to get to a shooting script that comports with the distribution goals and comports with the budget. The fourth mistake that I have seen is rushing through pre-production. Abraham Lincoln is purported to have said, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I will spend four hours sharpening the ax. That is a quote about preparation. And preparation in filmmaking is absolutely crucial. Filmmakers often will not schedule sufficient time for pre-production which unavoidably leads to mistakes during principal photography. Depending on the project, there should be typically at least eight weeks of pre-production before principal photography commences. However, the exact amount of time is going to depend on the nature and complexity of each project. Mistake number five, undermanning your crew. A good assistant director can be as important as the actual director of the film. And a good line producer can end up being more vital than any other producer on the project. Do not skimp on the crew, as you may pay for it by having a film that cannot be finished on time or under budget. Mistake number six, not allotting sufficient amount of time to become a SAG signatory. Regardless of the budget, even ultra low budget projects, it can take four to six weeks to become approved as a SAG signatory company. Don't assume it can be done in less time. You cannot contract 
with SAG actors until the production has become a SAG signatory. Mistake number seven, not setting aside enough for the SAG bond. SAG will require that producers put up a bond to ensure payment of the SAG actors. And SAG holds that bond until the end of production. So producers will not have access to that money. You need the budget for it, and it's usually 40 to 50% of the negotiated SAG actor salaries. And that's if you're using a payroll company. If you're not, the production may be required to advance the entire amount plus fringes, which is pension, health, and benefits. Mistake number eight, not getting a name actor for the production. Circling back to thinking about distribution, producers should seek to get a name actor for the project. Now, this does not mean you have to hire Tom Cruise and hire him as the lead. Sales agents and distributors can give insight into what actors have appeal in what territories. And you can have them in supporting roles. They do not need to be the lead. They can end up being just several days on set. And if you're gonna go through the process of becoming a SAG signatory, then you should avail yourself of the most important commodity in getting distribution, and that is an actor with distributor appeal. Mistake number nine is not budgeting for the deliverables. If you, if it is not enough to get a distributor to agree to distribute your project, you have to deliver the project to the distributor. What you deliver are called the deliverables, which are the physical and legal elements of the project. If you haven't budgeted to do so, you will not be able to avail yourself of the distribution agreement that is being proposed. And finally, mistake number 10, not using a collection account manager. Once you get distribution and deliver it to the distributor, hopefully your project will generate revenue. However, if you do not retain a collection account manager, also known as a CAM, then you as the producers of the project will be responsible for distributing revenue to financiers, deferments, pain residuals, pension and health benefits. And that is an incredibly bad idea as that can be a very complicated and challenging process. And it is one that is well worth the 1% that a collection account manager will typically charge to do it for you. If you have any questions or if you have a project you wish to discuss, don't hesitate to contact us.